to start when you're doing this, you want as much information to the viewer uh, about what's going on, who is in play, where it's happening, what time of the day it is, and all these kinds of things. But the first thing you have to do when you're 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 um, when you're doing visual storytelling is to uh, set your story. So first of all, you've got to tell the the uh, the viewer. Come on, color, the where, the when, and the who. These three are how you begin to tell your story. There are exceptions to this, especially when you're doing a mystery or you want to surprise your viewer. But these three are very, very important when you're doing your uh, when you're starting to tell your story. So. The way to do this, and this is valid for comics, it's valid for uh, it's valid for comics, it's valid for um, for storyboards, it's valid for animation, live action, it's valid for all of these things. So you start with what's called your establishing shot. Hang on a second, I'm going to put myself on mute. We're flipping back and forth between screens. Um, because yeah. it's sound generated, so I'm going to put myself on mute so it's not Excellent. flipping. Ooh, flipping. Or. Excellent. All right, so your establishing shot is often a very wide shot of what you've got, where your story is taking place. So it's a big city, say. You've got buildings and you may have a plane going by just to tell you that it's in the modern age you have uh, maybe it's your colors are blue and all that to so show that it's uh, it's daytime so you're telling the where and the when and let's say that this place is actually um, the daily planet so you know that this is taking place, if you're, it's a superhero comic, you know that this is taking place in Metropolis and you've got the Daily Planet and it's daytime and you've got your setup like this. This is your establishing shot. You can follow this up with a close-up shot of the Daily Planet itself and maybe you'll have your speech bubble coming from the window of Perry yelling at Clark and Lois because he's not getting the story he wants. You follow up with a full shot. So you're establishing shots. We're setting up your story. Uh, the the who the where. Uh, we're setting up the where and the when. Your full shot it can introduce your who. So in your full shot, you can have Perry's office with you know Perry's desk there and Perry is behind his desk and you can have Clark and Lois and Clark who are just standing there window a uh, big board maybe there's clocks on the wall but you've got your shot here so you see it's full body poses of your characters In this case, you've got the conversation going between Perry and the and the two reporters. So we can follow this up with a shot of Perry saying, "How come the other newspaper got the story that we were trying to say we were trying to sell and you guys didn't get it?" And Lois replies but you didn't send us to the right place and this is why we didn't get the story. So she replies. Now I've done something here where I've got the two characters who are talking to each other but they are on the paper actually facing each other. If I draw on Lois If I drawn her like this, then it doesn't look like she's speaking to him. It actually looks like she's talking to the wall or something. She's not having the conversation with him. This is called uh, this is due to something called the axis, which I'll get back to later. 
we'll cancel that. So we've got our full shot, and this is called a medium shot. The medium shot can go from about the waist, go back to pencil, about the waist of the character to about mid shoulder, like this size to this size is called a medium shot. You follow that up with a close up. of the character, which can be pretty much just head, maybe beginning of shoulders, and he's chewing on his cigar. Oh no, they're not smoking anymore. Anyways, um, so he's talking, this is a close-up shot, and maybe the extreme close-up of Lois making her point she can be cropped really close ah black pencil she can be cropped really close to say hey you're not actually listening to me so this by going to the close up you're increasing the intensity of the uh, emotion of the conversation that's going on. By going bang, bang, closer, closer, you're really increasing the tension between the two characters. And then, that's not what I want, that's what I want, that's not what I want, this is what I want, and then all of a sudden, You can do uh, you can break back to a wider shot to include your third character or to reduce the tension. with Clark going, um, sorry, but um, aren't we getting away from the point here? Maybe we should be a little bit more concerned about the fact that the other journal has stolen our story and not so much about the contents of the story itself. Or something like that. It can be anything. Now, the thing about crossing the axis that I mentioned earlier, when you've got a conversation going on between two people, or three, depends, You've got one character here, and he's behind his desk, and you've got Clark standing here, and you've got Lois, who originally was standing here, but now is leaning over the desk, but it doesn't matter. The conversation is mostly happening between Lois and Perry, so there is an axis that goes across the two of them. This axis is very uh, very very important in storytelling because everything that you show in your different shots are actually uh, will give the relationship between everything and everything in the room and all the story to the viewer because you've established where the characters are and now anywhere you place your camera your viewer will know where everyone is in relationship to this and your camera as long as it sta stays in this half of the axis in this side of the room and in, in this side of the axis it will always be the same uh, the same viewpoint it's like being a viewer in the audience and this is the stage that has been set and you're sitting in a seat and your stage and your characters are on the stage you're not going to suddenly change your seat here you're always going to be viewing from this area so your camera can be in this in Lois's face or in Perry's face because of the way it's placed it will always show the relationship between the two characters it will always work in that sense it can be placed from high above filming the f filming on uh, down on them or it can be 
place below and filming from above the two characters. But this will mean that, yeah, this will mean that, uh, like such, if I have a shot on Perry with Lois like this, which means my camera is placed here. So it's over the shoulder and we see this. If my shot is like this, with the desk in between, and Clark is standing behind like this, then we know that the camera is somewhere back here looking at this. If we've got a shot that's with maybe Clark a little bit in the back like this, we know that our camera is probably this one but at an angle. But then if we move the camera to the other side and film like this, then suddenly your shot becomes Clark and Lois and Perry. But as a viewer, you end up wondering, when did everybody change place? When did they walk around? What happened exactly that made that these guys are now on the other side of Perry? And this is the whole axis thing that throws people off. I saw an episode of Grimm once where you had the conversation between the two people sitting at dinner and it had a lot of the over-the-shoulder shots. So you had the woman sitting here with the guy sitting in front of her and they've got the dinner table and they're you know talking and flirting and menacing and being generally you know bad to each other and all that and you've got the reverse shot of her and she's sitting there and he's you know not having any of it and he's he's sitting there and it went back and forth between shots like this and then there was a shot where she was sitting there and he was sitting there which didn't make sense because all of a sudden she was sitting on the opposite side of the table and he was sitting on the opposite side of the table but that didn't make sense because it had been established that she was on this side and he was on this one. So this throws the viewer off. It jostles the, the scene. It makes it not make sense. The same as if, if I'd gone from this shot here to having a shot like this of him with her over the shoulder. She's been established as being on this side and now he's on this side. That doesn't work. This whole panel does not work in this continuity. But then how do you make the switch? How do you switch your camera to the other side of the axis? The secret is in diverting the attention of your viewer. If you've got your shot with the over-the-shoulder of this person and this person sitting at the table, and this is back of this one, and then you want to have the camera switch, there can be something that catches their attention and they go, what the heck? And they turn. And then you go, what's going on? And then you show 
in this case, woman and man, and whatever it is that caught their attention. Person coming in, having dropped the glasses or something, or the meal. So in this case, it works because you have taken the attention from them and diverted it off screen so that something else can be brought in. You've directed the camera, you've directed the viewer's attention towards what the viewer needs to see, the important stuff. You can also do this if you've got a scene with a character talking to another character and then they talk about something and you can go to say the clock on the wall that tells us that it's getting to be that time of the night and then you can come back to your two characters especially if you're gonna do it as a full shot or a wide shot you can come back to your two characters and this is one and this is two and you can have your character number two here and your character number one here it especially helps you in reestablishing the background and the setting so that you give the viewer uh, the information that they need in order to continue following the story but every time you do a new establishment like this is a new establishment this is a new establishment you've got your new axis that's being drawn across your characters so you need to keep a consistency between your conversation and the characters keep in mind always 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 keeping in mind the axis now one thing that's really really tricky is doing full frontal shots of people because that breaks the fourth wall it also it involves the it involves a viewer directly it's like you're talking to the viewer directly you're making the viewer a character in your story this type of point of view thing is is tricky and it shouldn't be done unless you're actually involving the the, the reader as a character put just a little bit of three quarter just a little bit because your camera can be on your character all the way to almost the axis but still not involve the reader as a participant in the conversation if you do this then you make the reader a participant and you switch to the if you switch to that guy's um, conversation partner and you make him you know the the frontal face as well it doesn't really communicate that the two of them are speaking to each other it just places you in the middle of them and you're now part of the story but you shouldn't be so it's kind of confusing so instead of this you can have that very tight very close to center three-quarter It's really, you know, seven, four, uh, like seven sixteenths or something instead of three quarter. But <laughs> uh, anyways, um, having this back and forth between you're just making stuff up now. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, that I'm making it up. But in this case, you've got the conversation between these two characters is still happening. This is not a conversation between the two of them. You are stuck in the middle. Now, another thing, this framing here that I've made is not good because if you want a conversation between two characters, it's called using your using two-thirds of your screen and leaving some blank space for communication this is why I framed this guy this way because the other guy should be framed with some blank space here and he's got the blank space here because you're it's the law of two-thirds if you use up two-thirds of your image and you leave that breathing room it directs the eye in that direction so you have 
the call in response. You have your two thirds, you fill up your two thirds here, and that's how the two panels communicate with each other. That is how you have um, a back and forth between characters. And this is especially important in storyboards because if you've got a conversation between two characters that you're framing pretty much the same way, you've got your silhouette of the one character, and then the following, the, the response of that is a silhouette of a character, even if it's a man and a woman, even if it's um, you know, black guy, white guy, even if it's anything like that, what's going to happen is that there's overlap. Your silhouettes look the same to the eye. The, the eye catches those two silhouettes as being the same thing. You, it doesn't register the actual cut between the two scenes. It doesn't register the conversation properly. So because of that, you really want to avoid that kind of framing. You want to give your characters a little bit of breathing room and conversation, because in, in conversation, because that way, let me tighten this frame here, tighten this one here. When you do your overlap, you see that there's a shift. So your brain, your brain does get the, um, the information that there was a cut between the two scenes, that there is a back and forth in that sense. All right, you guys are good with me so far? Good. All right. So, now this, this is called, in this case, call and response. Call and response is as much a term of um, a conversation. I'm occupying this two-thirds. In response, I'm occupying the opposite two-thirds. You can have something going on in your scene where your two-thirds are the bottom and you can have your response where it's going to be the top so you can have somebody going hey dude what's going on up there you can have someone at the top going hey I know what's going on and in this case I can have the body going down like this but the main attraction is still in the two-thirds at the top so you've got that call and you've got that response. Same thing if you use your camera in that's crap. You've got an upshot of someone, you know, here I come to save the day. and stuff. Upshot. Response. Oh my god, look above! Yay, it's Superman! So you've got your upshot, and as a response, your downshot, which is a little bit like the point of view of your of uh, this <gasps> character. And this tells you this is how people see him. So there's a back and forth between the two panels. So far so good? All right. Now, this all of this information is good for storyboards, it's good for, for comics and all that. There is, uh, the next step is going to be about comics specifically because it's going to be uh, lettering comics and word bubbles and things like that. One of the first things about, uh, about lettering in comics is that you have to keep in mind that in North America and every language where it's written from left to right we tend to read like this 
So when you have your word bubbles, they should follow this kind of direction. You can't have a word bubble that is here. You know, have something here, have a response there, and have a response there. The eye is going to hit this first and then go and hit these things. If your order, if what you want your order to be is this, that's not how the pages are going to be read. Your, the viewer is going to read this one first because it's the first one you hit on that side of the page. So they're going to read this one and then go to this one, then go to this one. And then they're going to say, wait, that doesn't make sense because this, this, this seems like a response to this. And then they have to come back and read the panel again and try to make sense of it. This back and forth inside the same panel is not good. So if you've got your page with your panels, word bubbles, two people talking to each other, response, and then you can have one person talking and then the person answering and then the other person saying something again. So say for example, I'm going to read this and then go here and then read this and go up and do this. But that's not what was intended. What was intended was this. But you're asking person to make a zigzag reading inside one panel. So that's not going to work. The eye naturally goes to whatever's on the left first. So instead of doing that, what you want to do, especially if you've got two people talking to each other in your panels, first of all, leave room for your word bubbles, especially if your characters are very, very wordy. Make sure that this is valid in comics mostly. I don't much like that rule because of my whole crossing the axis thing, but they say that the person who speaks first should be on the left. If you've got somebody who speaks after, make the balloon follow that. Inside the panel, always make sure that the first balloon that should be read should be at the, at the top most. That's the first one that should be read. Then you can have a little bit of a zigzag between the two because you're still, you've established which one is the first balloon read. So having two characters talking to each other and having their word balloons on the sides like this, especially if this one is supposed to be number one and this is two and this is three, uh, no, this is one, sorry. This is one, this is two, and this is three. If you want your reader to go to this one first and that one and then that one, that's not going to read. So, let's make our eraser a little bit bigger. There we go. First of all, give more room at the top. Then, have guy who says number one, talk first. Number two, and number three, word bubble. So you give yourself more room at the top. Or you find a way to restage in order to have your number one character in the front. Maybe, he talk, maybe you frame him by himself and have the other guy's word bubble be off screen. and have his response after that. You can do that. You don't have to have the two characters in the same panel all the time. Heck, if he was facing in that direction, you can have him in that direction. Saying his first word bubble, having the answer of the other. And then his follow-up response. You can do that kind of thing in your, in your panels. Um, Where else was I? Uh, the thing is, whenever I give this panel, I go blah, so much information all at the same time that I kind of need somebody to bring back questions. So if you have questions, unmute and please ask them so that I can 
uh, come back to information or, or remember certain things that I've forgotten. I think but, my, yeah. my only question at this point, um, you know, you have that person on the left being the first person to talk thing. Well, what if you've got established where they're standing and now later on in the conversation it'll be the person on the right's turn to speak first and that's really just a matter of, of tweaking the frame to put them in the right position or over the shoulder or something like that. So um, that was the only question I had and then I I was like, Jennifer, you're being an idiot and thought outside the box for like two seconds. So, um, But maybe... Uh, <laughs> but, but just well, like in this in your panel, you would might, you might want to show, okay, so you've established that this is where they're sitting and now you want person number two to be the first one to talk um, and this is different ways you can put them on the right side of the frame to make them and blah blah blah. Anyway, I'm shutting there up now. There are different ways of doing that. One of the things that you can do is like you said, have the over the shoulder shot and have your character who we know is on that side and because he is the one you see, the other person you only see part of you can have him have the main speech bubble, have this guy's response, and then have that third response. Or, you know, since we're doing that, you can have like that. So he's the main person that's talking as being the first, and this person is only responding, so we see him partly. So instead of always having the same, you know, two people that are on even standing and back and always having a back and forth between the two characters you can use that switching back and forth of the angle and having the other person reply So the back and forth. You can also, you don't need to have the other person absolutely showing in the panel. You can have make more cuts, have just a single character saying something. Again, you know, with the law of two thirds. So that you really establish the back and forth. In a case where you have the two characters who are really close to each other and talking like in each other's faces and you know things like that you can have the characters on an even footing but give them more room at the top to insert your back and forth word bubbles which are still following that kind of reading direction does that make sense good all right, so I covered the different types of shots. I covered the back and forth. Um, right, constructing your panels. Earlier, when I did the uh, the back and forth, and I did my perspective grid like this, this is a very useful tool because it will always give you uh, a grounding to set up your scene. In this case, you know, it can be my New York City that I had earlier or Metropolis or whatever having the grid helps you build your background you can have the grid you know your your horizon line and all that can be in there and you can use that grid to build your backgrounds build your your scenes here let's say I have a car and I can have my characters standing and talking to each other using that perspective grid now one of the things about this perspective grid is that it will not only allow you to have a background that works with your characters but it also allows you to create depth in the things you are drawing. So maybe I've got another car in the foreground. 
and they're talking in the in the parking lot or in the middle of the street. It can be there can be another card, so that's a parking lot, say. So you can have things in your foreground, your characters in the middle, and then more things in the back. So you create a depth of field in your scene. You make your background interesting. You have a thing that's in the foreground. It can be an important element, or it can be just something to make your background more pretty. So fun, you have your character walking in with, you know, the important thing that he's carrying in his hands. But you've got, since you've got this in your foreground, it makes an interesting element for the viewer to see. Perspective grid also allows you to fix things like this frame is wrong. This, yeah. So this whole thing about uh, depth um, can make things a lot more interesting, can make things a lot more climactic, a lot more moody, depending on what you use and how how twisted your perspective is or how wide it, it how wide your grid is. Like this is a very um, squeeze perspective because my vanishing points are very close together. This has very far away vanishing points, so it's less uh, squeezed up in this sense. Um, what else? You can chime in any time. I'm I'm losing steam here. <laughs> I think mostly I'm just trying to absorb and memorize everything you're saying. <laughs> well, the good thing about this being a live hangout is that you can go back and watch it again. So oh, that I know. So that's going to help. What about you, Gilly? Do you have any any questions? I'm terrible at asking questions. I'm just taking it all in. I'm sure once I actually start trying to do some of this, <laughs> I'll have questions. <laughs> all right. So how about I show you some examples of things that I've done in the past? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Let's go back to an old, old thing. Sagwa, the Chinese Siamese cat. Eventually the screen will change and you'll see it. Doodly 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 doo. Okay. I'm going to have to stop the screen share and restart it again because it's not... All right. Hey. Um, okay. We restart the screen share. There we go. Icon. And that's the one. Then start the screen share. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. In this case, uh, this is a storyboard for a TV show called Sagwa the Chinese Siamese Cat. Uh, I used to work on this back in the night in uh, but there's still good information, and uh, this is the episode that I uh, was um, selected for an Emmy nomination, but never actually it never actually went to the nomination. But they still sent that one in for Emmy nomination, so I'm pretty proud of this one. Anyways, first we start with the establishing shot with a truck in. A truck in is like a zoom in, but it's done with the physically advancing the camera on the animation sheet. So that's why it was that way. We've got a second establishing shot, so the previous one says this is happening in the Palace of the Magistrate. It's telling me when this is, it's daytime. And then we go here, it's inside the room, the office of the Magistrate. What's going on? Hi! <laughs> she back got it on mute. <laughs> uh, anyways, so, uh, this is happening inside the magistrate's uh, office, so we zoom into the table where the cats are on the table. Now, I've got my axis that's pretty much been established between Sagwa and Shigwa here. And so we've got Sagwa painting and Shigwa looking, uh, looking down, and she responds, Shigwa. She could have been shifted a little bit that way, 
but she's still, you know, I've got her looking at Sagwa in that sense. And then we go down to Dongwa, who's on the floor, looks up, turns and jumps on top of the table to join Sagwa and Shigwa. So we've got a pan up, going up, to join the other two cats. This could also have been shifted a little bit because Sagwa's tail is off the screen. But it's old stuff, so anyways. So, <laughs> you've got uh, the axis again between Shigwa and Sagwa. Dongwa is in between them. So you've got Dongwa replying to Shigwa. We're establishing again where everybody is in relationship with you. It's uh, okay. Cindy. <laughs> I have to give my love to you because I don't see you very often. <laughs> Well, you're not seeing me now. You're seeing my storyboards. Okay, so uh, Dong, uh, this one I went wide again so I could reestablish the position of all the characters. Dongwa is replying, and Shigwa is smiling back at Dongwa. So you've got the axis here. The camera has shifted to the other side. Back to this one, which is the response. We're still. I still have not crossed the axis. This is still the camera is on the same side like this. Come on. Uh, he grabs the paper, turns around, and jumps off the table off screen. He's out. The other two cats are following him, which allows me to change the camera pointed in the opposite direction. So the desk is somewhere here. So they're running in that direction. I'm sw the camera has swiveled, cut, but it has swiveled in the opposite direction. So I can have these two and is again going out. No, not going out. The girls grab the drawing and they all do a tug of war. They they turn around and then the drawing rips and they stop. And then we have a shot over the ceiling. And my camera is like wedging itself in between, uh, like in the middle, but it's still on this side of the conversation, placing itself right here. All right. So there's that one. Now, comics. Let's see, comics, comics, comics. Where did I put my comics? Oh, they're in here. Okay. Whee! Okay. Going back to this, like such, and Photoshop, start screen share. All right. This was from Dragon's Universe, which was from the line of toys from Mega Bloks that uh, I was doing the comic for, and they never actually published a comic because the time frame uh, didn't work with them, and they, the sales weren't as good for the toys. But in this case, I wanted to show it because you've got the, uh, the word bubbles going. This one could have been placed higher, but you've got the reading Let's do this. Do we have this? Yes. The first word bubble, and you've got that kind of thing here. The kale should have been up here. So we continue this way. We get to the end of the line, we come back here, and that's the direction it's taking. We come back here, and we go like this. We come back here, and we go like this. It's that flow of story goes like such. Next page, we flow always like this. That makes sense? A little bit later in the comic... <sighs> yeah. Laser beam hits the dragon's wing and they freak out. So my flow is going like this in this case. You got coming up and around, 
and down this way. So in this case, you've got uh, panels that are, this is something that I didn't talk about, spacing between panels and things like that. These panels are overlapping and they've got um, rough edges and things like that and this big open panel which actually bleeds underneath everything. They're overlapping which guides the eye as to where the stories, uh, the direction the story is telling. The overlapping also cuts down on the time between each panel. Things are happening very, very, very quickly and they're very rough and it's combat and it's, uh, you know, dragons with laser beams attached to their backs and, and speeders and explosions and things like that. So because things are happening very quickly, that's why I went with the, with the, the, the panel with the uh, jagged edges. This one is because it's sort of a beauty shot of the, 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 the toys themselves. I wanted that to breathe, to have the, the big speed going on. Oh, yeah, and all the action, you see that he's pointing in this direction. And that's not working because I didn't choose the proper color to do this. Here, let us have some bright red. There we go. So his garg, sorry. I know what I'm doing. I swear to God I know what I'm doing. Okay. So, his action is pointing in that direction. Theirs is in that direction. Because they just shot a laser beam and it deflected the laser beam off of its wing. This was added afterwards with colors. So their action is going that way. They're going that way they are going in that direction, they're going in that direction. It's always heading in the direction of the... It's always heading in the direction off-screen. Ah, Sorry about that. Photoshop just crashed. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah. It's spoiled again. Yeah. Well, in any case, the, uh, the important information that's happening here is that I had the axis between the fighters on their speeders and the big dragon. And that was my axis. So my camera on the dragon looking at him and then my camera towards these guys looking at these guys from different directions. At the end I've got that camera here. So I'm always staying on this side of the axis. Uh, the other thing, if I go back to panels, if you've got in your comic your panels, you've got gutters in your comics. The gutters, the space in the gutters actually communicates to the reader how much time is going on between your different panels. The closer your panels are to each other, the more, uh, the, the quicker your action is going. The more space you have between panels, you indicate that there's a pause. There's a pause between your panels. If you've got something like you want to give something significant in terms of um, mood or uh, it's especially good in drama, it's very much in use in uh, manga, it's that pause between two panels, like you can have the one panel of the person on the phone and then there's a large space between the other that panel and the other panel having that amount of space between the panels communicates to the reader that it, there was a while between him listening to his phone and then looking at his phone. 
it's not something that happened right away. It's not like weird noise followed by what's going on. This is I got Do back. You need to be sharing your screen with us right now. No, I'm. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> you... <laughs> derp -a -derp. Like, I think she's actually showing us something. Yes, I am. <laughs> she's explaining. I am. There we go. Okay. Yay. So, space between panels. Let's start again. I was using my imagination. So was I. I. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I can picture okay. it. So, uh, the the space between the panels, the gutters actually gives information of time passing. The difference between this and this. This tells you that, you know, I put the I put the three dots in the middle to indicate uh, that it's representing a pause. If you see in the comic this scene here, it shows that there's this person is receiving some disturbing news on the on the phone. There's a pause before the looking at the phone. This here communicates that the person has either is hearing something weird on the phone or some bad news or something like that but the reaction is a lot quicker here there's actually a pause and this is something that's used in manga the, using the page uh, using the white space of the page like having your character standing in white and then having panels next to the character. This is something that's used in manga. It makes it a lot more airy. It, cre it can create mood. It can create um, situations that um, communicate feeling to the reader. Just like panels that bleed out of the page, they are... Um, I'm not sure exactly how to express that, but panels that bleed out of the page, I tend to use them personally when I'm doing beauty shots, when I'm doing establishing shots, when I'm doing things like that, that are, um, that breathe, that take time. Um, so I like to fill up the, like, expand out, but using the white space on the page is also very telling in terms of uh, communicating loneliness, communicating... Uh, and not just loneliness in a bad sense. It can be loneliness, but that good kind of lonely where you're at peace with being alone. So you can use that those kinds of panels, uh, those kinds of lack of panels, to communicate that kind of information. Um, panels that overlap, like I had in the other comic. The overlapping obviously means that the panel that is on top is the one that happens next. Having panels like this allows you to break a little bit the rule of this is, you know, panel one, panel two, panel three should be overlapping panel two, but you can break the rule a little bit of how a, per, a page is read by having, you know, weirdly overlapping panels, like panel one, panel two. Do you have a type of situation where you would recommend using that kind of method? Uh, you mean uh, overlapping panels? Yeah, overlap, cause, yeah. Like, I would think, I don't know, very intense, like high action. Situation. High action, very intense, speedy. Um, when things happen very, very quickly, you like it. It's, again, the lack of gutters means that the eye is going to jump quickly from one panel to the next panel to the next panel to the next panel because your your panels are overlapping. You're, you're instantly drawn right away to the next one as if it were the same drawing. Same way, uh, or the opposite way, if you've got that one panel and then you've got another panel that's sitting by itself and then you've got that other panel at the bottom here, you're going to read one, two, then three, but there's a lot of room to breathe here. There's a lot of empty space. There's a lot of you know, you pause between your panels because you get the feeling that time is passing between each panel. This is something when you want to, if it is one continuous scene, you can use that for, um, say, a, uh, a dramatic moment when people are 
giving uh, sad or very important information that need to let sink in. So that's when you use panels like this. But if you put them close together, then that means that things are going a lot faster. If you've got a panel, uh, not a panel, a page that basically has one, two, or three panels, usually a page like this will be slower in reading, will be paced more slowly than a page that has lots and lots and lots of panels. A page that has lots and lots of panels, basically when you're reading a comic, you're spending the same amount of time on each page. But because you're spending uh, that same amount of time, it's like, say you spend 30 seconds reading a comic, then it's maybe, you know, 12 seconds here and 18 seconds on this one. But you've got 30 seconds on this page and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight panels. You're a lot fewer seconds per panel. So you're going to speed through this page and this one you're going to take your time. Again, that's a whole communicating of how much action is actually taking place and how fast things are happening in the comic. So if you want things to take their time, use fewer panels. If you're in the midst of an action scene, there's lots of stuff going on, don't cram 15 characters per panel on your page like this, but, you know, have, like, quick shots, close-ups, and, you know, go from close-ups and wide shots and things like that, but with a lot of panels on your page, you're communicating things that are happening very, very fast. And again, if you have a page that has, you know, maybe the, a few panels, but one of them is like a panel where it's completely open and it's the setup is, um, you know, well, I'm drawing like crap right now. You may have your one character who's talking and the rest of the panels are happening on top of that drawing. So she can be talking back and forth between the characters. Then you can establish maybe your scene or something like that. Again, this is that beauty shot, that establishing shot, that giving the information to the viewer of this person is important in your story. Um, there's also a lot of breathing room around the character, so you're going to take your time reading this one panel and, and taking in this panel, then there's more information. So this, these become secondary to this beauty shot you've got here. But yeah, basically speed of reading depends on gutters, how many panels you have in your page, and uh, also uh, the shape of your panels. Because not everything has to be square. You can have panels that are in weird kind of shapes. That gives even more of a jarring uh, emotion to your, your characters and uh, more of a... Uh, more of more emotion or more drama or more uh, intensity or things like that depending on how you shape your panels. You can have round panels, you can have uh, different types of things. There's a, in the bad guys comic whenever uh, they were talking, at one point they were talking inside Matrix who shaped himself like a big ball. So whenever I go back in flashback to that scene the bubbles would be circular and you'd have the characters talking to each other inside that metal ball. I apologize, I'll be right back. I have to go let my friend in. No problem. Uh, so we'll take a break. So Jennifer. Yes, ma'am. Is this helping? Yeah, it is. I, I just, I still feel like it's way out of my skill level. So I mean, I want to. I want to be able to utilize all this and and make a dynamic uh, 
a comic, but I just feel like my skill is lacking so much that this is going to be really a challenge for me. Okay. So. Well, what I can do next actually is take up, uh, take your pages, and give them a run through. That would be that would be great. Okay. And uh, I'll send you what I have done on on page three so far too. Okay. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to to to. I want to make it dynamic, but I I'm afraid that again, like. I'll be screwing up the story. Uh, I won't be clear what's going on. So I've kind of, I, as you can tell, Sorry. kept it simple mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, on the pages that you've seen so far. Okay. Well, I'm gonna bring up that first page. Ah, she's gonna bring up our crap. And I'm okay. gonna share the screen this time. Get here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, this is Kareen. Hi, Matt. This is Matt. <laughs> this is my boyfriend. Eh. <laughs> Hi, Kareen. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jen. Nice to meet you. Hi, Matt. <laughs> okay, Hi. screen share. All right. There we go. Oh, you got me so back up. No, not that one. That one. No, that one. Screen share. Okay. All right. No met by Conlight. Yes, still one left. What I like about this one is the fact that you've got that table in between the two characters. Don't forget your perspective here. I love your stick figures, Jack. They're so great. Had you not seen this, Gilly? No. <laughs> not like the fleshed out version. <laughs> the only way you can tell our characters apart is one has glasses and the other one has foofy hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Okay, I see what I'm going to do here, but the the problem is because it cuts all the way to this. I tend to look at it this way. So instead, I would probably have you know, this is good. I I'd probably maybe cut. Maybe cut your panel like this, have that happening. And such. And then split this one. So doing the angles in this case is not necessary. But I like the close up here of the faces and then the realization. So that's pretty much the only change I'd make in here would be that. That's pretty much all I have to say about this page here because this is this is good. This maybe more information as to what this is, where this is. Yeah, that um, what, and I it I'll even have like the con light and stuff, and it, there'll be things in the background that show that it's a convention that you'll see the convention okay. banner and stuff like that. So, so what else is on the table? Other crap, other convention crap. You know, there'll be posters and stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is good. Maybe squeeze this a little bit more. Squeeze this, these panels here. Ah, these panels here. Maybe move up a little bit so you have this panel not be overly, um, overly tight. Okay. But yeah, split them like this, and that works. This page here, you go back to a wide shot of the two. Now I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to uh, to figure out the now yeah. I know this I understand this that's not the problem it's more like you're starting here to get a little bit repetitive in your in your staging but your your word bubbles I uh, that's where the problem starts with the word bubbles is where you're placing them yeah, I was just, I mean, those aren't where placement actually will be on those. That's just where I was writing it all out, so... Okay. So they're not actually, like, it, that's definitely not where I would put the word bubbles on those. Okay. So, you've got, he is, like, leaning forward, and this guy is going back. He was trying to back away. Is that what you're, you're, you've got here? 
yeah, I think I think the guy on the right is a little uh, taken back by. First of all, this guy in front of him is gorgeous, and he's uh, kind of a shy guy, and so he's kind of leaning back, like, "Wow, he's adorable and aggressive." <laughs> <laughs> In this case, instead of staying with this kind of thing, Yeah. Oh, you've got that either both line that's the follow up to this. Okay, I would move the either both to this panel here and then go with the close ups of the two characters and move those down. So you have room for them to actually um, to actually talk to each other. It's my favorite movie. Okay, you see, this is one of those situations where your dialogues. This is supposed to be one, this is two, and I read this one first, and then I went here and I, went like this. And again, that's. And, you know, I've done the word bubbles on comics before, but the thing is, like, it was just. That, I mean, I like. The only reason those are written there is just to remind me that that conversation is going in that panel with that person. So I kind of, you'll notice I've put the writing on the side that the person yes. is writing and not across, you know, in any kind of leading way. Okay. Because what of what you've got going on here, I would change the I would change this panel here to have probably an over the shoulder shot. Okay. Is going like this. And this guy over the shoulder, and he's saying, my favorite movie. He says, oh, your favorite. You know, because he's saying, that's my favorite movie. He says, oh, that's your favorite. And uh, he says, I think I'll manage. And then you can have, you know, maybe an over-the-shoulder shot of this guy and this one, you know, going blah, 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 and they're talking to each other. And then behind him, you have the crowd of people going, Oh my god, it's him! <laughs> and then he should have a little bit more of a three-quarter, seven-sixteenths like I put earlier. Because in that sense, he's responding to their placement here. So he's like this, and they see him in that direction. See? So yeah, I like this shot. This is good because you've just gone from the close-up of the two characters on the page before where they look at each other. You know, the frown, go going from the frown to the surprise. I have the same exact framing on these two panels and you end up with a beat between the two and it really is a flow of that's the same action. You're just getting two uh, like two poses of that one action. And you go here and you make it white again so that releases the tension that you've got on this bottom here. That's great. That's perfect. Uh, so yes, I like this because you've got the thing about him you know, trying to remove his hand. Now you need to either uh, in this panel He's got that hand on it, which means he's right-handed. This guy's left-handed. No, actually, you've got the wrong hand here. Well, uh, and then uh, where he's leaning in is kind of a hand. Okay, no, no here you've, you've got, got the wrong hand. hand. They're shaking hands. So yeah, but the thing is, you've got the wrong hand on. I, I switched it out, huh? Yeah, because this yeah, hand is the same as in the previous page. 
but then you go here and he no longer has the correct hand so in that case you know he's leaning in with his left hand he's got the right hand if you want it to be a handshaking you're gonna have to change it here oh see he's got that hand here he's got that hand here you're leading with the wrong hand in this case yeah you've got that hand so make be careful about that because right now you've got the wrong hands here and here okay so if you want this one lower that arm and antic this one and have this this hand and that one lean more that way lean more that way so in that case he would have his hand like this and this guy would have his hand going like this right then you go to this one where he's got his hand like this and he's got the hand like this and then he can go hey 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 with his arm like such and well this works now in this case this one now works so a switch and grab of the hand while he was trying to pull away yeah so then background background so yeah, make sure you have the DVD at the bottom I seem to have lost sound. Can anybody? So, uh, can you hear me? Because I can't get in. She must. Does she have somebody uh, else? Yeah. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Is that Laura? Put your pants back on. Yes. No, don't. <laughs> no one can see what's going on. <laughs> He's dancing for you. You can't oh, see. Nice. He's dancing for you. Should be giving me mood hair. It's the it's <laughs> <my boy Bobby. laughs> only you would run. And we can't hear you. Uh oh, there you are. Oh yeah, she's muted. It says well, you're on mute. Here you go. Oh. Okay, well. What the heck? Okay, sorry. Something <laughs> happened. All right. I don't know why I'm there twice. Okay, there I am. All right, so. How, when did when did the communication drop off? Um, no. It was you were had um. You're putting the lines on the um. The perspective lines on the. the okay, so basically you saw all of this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the about these pages. It really is uh, just a question of switching your angles around and making sure you, you place your your speech bubbles properly and to give them give the room for the speech bubbles when you do it. One of the things I like to do when I work on comics is I work digitally with uh, with um, Manga Studio. I was gonna say, is that the program that you're using? For my comics, I will use Manga Studio often. Mm -hmm. um, Manga Studio is actually, uh, I haven't installed the version 5 yet, but I have it. I'm still on 4. I'm opening up 4 just at the moment. Give me a sec. I bought a version about a year ago, and I never use it because I don't know how. And my Photoshop is awful with my tablet. Hey, oh my, nice shoes. No, Laura you... just walked in. She's the sexiest thing on two legs. 
When you're nice. using Manga Studio, when you're using Manga Studio, it's a lot of it is like Photoshop in the sense that you've got layers and you've got your sketch. Your, you can sketch, you can draw. Your tools are similar. If you've got a tablet, that's what you need, obviously. Um, but what I like to do with Manga Studio is actually use uh, do each panel on its own layer, so that I can reshape and resize and reposition my panels as I see fit, as I need to. So, I like that. So let me just uh, redo. I'm a lot more comfortable drawing. Well, <laughs> don't even get me started on my issues with my Photoshop and my tablet. I have a bad lag with my Photoshop and my tablet. I have a nice tablet. It's an Intuos 5, and it's beautiful, and it's got to be Photoshop. And uh, is you would it is Photoshop. Today and I, will, I will tell you right away, it is Photoshop. Photoshop is not designed for artists. It is designed for photo retouchers. You need to get okay. your hands on something like Manga Studio. Yes, you need to use Manga Studio. Uh, use programs like Paint Tool Sci, like Sketchbook Pro. These programs are dis definitely made for artists who are drawing digitally because the pen tool is so much more responsive. This is why I was using Paint Tool Sci when I was using like, all the panels I mean, the comics. And and all that, all the course I just gave was done on uh, paint tool side because it's very, very responsive to the stuff I can draw my circle and it will look like a circle. It will look like a thing. It's not going to be edges and lap. Sorry, I'm now, having to just share my studio. The sound is cutting out a lot. All right, Mega Studio. Just gonna show. Whoop. Come over it's here. Not yes. Oh no, I ended up working out. So. We. That's big. Don't I apologize, guys. Uh, <laughs> there are there are people arriving. The party is starting in the house. We understand. <laughs> okay. Jesse is here. here. I'm sure Hello. Tell I Jesse you, I want to lick him all over. <laughs> hey guys, come say hi. <laughs> I'm not reading pizza. Okay, buddy, it's all right. Hi, nice oh, Good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay. Put it on. Put it on mute, Gilly. <laughs> it's really interesting. Manga Studio, as it's being uh, uh, broadcast, does not show my layers, my 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 additional windows, because it's only focusing on one window. So let me just huh. change that around. This, this is really interesting. Okay, so there I go. Ah, there I go. If I do full screen like this, there we go. You're going to see all my windows. Okay, so in Manga Studio, you've got your layers folder which is pretty much the same as in Photoshop. You've got sketch layers and an ink layer and things like that. So I've got my my roughs and my inks, as you could see. But what I like to do... Jen, do you have Manga Studio? Jen? I wonder if we could get you a copy. Oh, she's, she's muted. <laughs> I'm talking to myself apparently. No, yeah. I don't I don't have it. Okay. This is just my very rough roughs that I've got on this page. Well, but I've good. done each of them on a panel. So each rough is on its own uh, layer. Each panel is on its own layer, which means I can take each uh, I can take each panel and move it around and resize it and things like that. If I'm going to resize, I'm going to, you know, actually select the tool and I can resize and I've got all these icons showing up at the bottom here that tell me, uh, that give me options as to what I can do. I can expand my selection, reduce my selection. I can move and transform my selection here. So I can move it either, you know, stretch or not. Holding the shift key allows me to actually shift it proportionally. 
the work the same as Photoshop and everything is in that window and my properties here allow me to do my changes if I want to have to keep the aspect ratio or not uh, using scale rotate transform distort perspective everything is there on this on the uh, the tool so I've got uh, copying and pasting if you copy it'll paste onto a new layer the same panel so this is all uh, my when I do my rough I position everything and then I will do my panels which is in the, the, the rulers that's uh, something that I can show you a little bit later in another uh, another broadcast um, yeah before the inks then I will have my roughs that I will do above my uh, above my 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 uh, type, my rough pencils. I'll do the roughs. Sometimes I'll do my backgrounds on a different layer so that I can really concentrate on the characters and really have the right poses. But I will do my backgrounds first. Always do the backgrounds first so you can place your characters properly. And then I put the inks on top of that. And because it's all in layers, it's very easy to it's very easy to just uh, to just move things around and and make layers invisible and all that. But also, you can keep your sketch layer visible. And when you generate, you export your page. You can tell it to just uh, print the finished image or print your sketch image as well. And you can have your sketched lines all still on your page, but when it prints out, it will only print out what you tell it to print. Your text, your tones, your finished image. If I were to remove that and say, okay, print that, or export it as a JPEG, then it will print the art but without the word bubbles. Now, one of the great things about Manga Studio is that everything is in a book. Sorry, I don't know what just happened. Mine just crapped out on me. You are appearing twice. Okay. Everything okay. is in a book. You tell your you tell your your um, your program how many pages you want. That's all. That's not what I want. You tell it how many pages you want. You tell it uh, what size your images are. You ask for your your frames and your your. Um, uh, your sizes of of uh, boxes and and bleeds and things like that. So you've got all that information in the program. So very rough thumbnails, but what I like to do is do my rough thumbnails and then add my uh, my word bubbles right away, so that if I need to move anything, I can move it around. I can shift things. So I'm having this conversation between these two characters. Background's going to be exactly the same between the three because it's just exposition. Um, but my flow of conversation is happening in that direction. Yeah, that's what the heck. That's not what I wanted. My flow of conversation is happening in that direction. That direction. Why is this not working? Oh, because I've got a selection, clear selection. I'm seeing the characters like this, but I'm reading them in this direction, all the word bubbles. So yeah, but with Manga Studio I can just have all my pages in the same book generate everything uh, into one PDF or the pages individually as JPEGs and uh, it's really really convenient it's a fun program to use it works really well with the stylus and the pens and things like that and if you want to import um, JPEGs or things like that and place them in that's not a problem these backgrounds are all made they're all drawn in pencil so they were all drawn in pencil in order to be dropped underneath the characters.
So yeah. Hmm. Any other questions? Stuff? Things? I'm just gonna sit here in awe. <laughs> I'm. <t> <laughs> I'm just always like wowed and amazed. <laughs> we'll just have to find another because, like, I bought Manga Studio about a year ago. They were having like a huge deal around Thanksgiving where you could get like the entire suite for forty bucks. Yes. Um, if we can find another deal like that, Jen, I'll just I'll make that your Christmas present. <laughs> I'll look. I'll look. And this is your other Christmas present. <laughs> Damn, I got lucky this year. I must have been very good. <laughs> All right, let me. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was your visual storytelling crash course. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kareen. Where Where can I like rewatch the the broadcast? Well, the um, the the nah, Sorry, it's gonna be on my YouTube. And it's yeah, gonna be also on my G Plus. The link is gonna be there. It's gonna be watch any time. Um, so um, actually, I should check if I got any comments on the G Plus or on the uh, on the YouTube channel about this. <laughs> Because that'd be interesting to see. Okay, that would be cool. I'm sorry, I'm not very I'm attentive to this go back and watch that again. It's definitely on the I'm list. Asked to, to join, but I don't know this person. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I would <laughs> like to have people I actually know join this. But yeah. Okay. He's good. He's good. Yeah. He's, He's cool. good. He's on YouTube. And all that. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end this broadcast at this point. And uh, if we want to keep talking, we can keep talking uh, okay. off. I apologize. I'm going to duck out. Thank you so much, Kareen. You're very welcome. Have fun with your friends. All right. You, you pinch all those hot people for me. Yes, right. he's here. Yes, he's here. He was in my room. <laughs> <laughs> they, wanted, they wanted to put on a show for you guys. I was encouraging them to do so. And, like... <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you tell him I want to lick him from top to bottom. <laughs> I will. Don't think I won't. <laughs> I'm fine. He Bye. knows. He knows. All right. <laughs> Bye, ladies. <laughs> And by everybody else, because now we're going to end this broadcast. I hope it was informative to everyone who watched, and that if you have any questions, you are welcome to leave a comment or email me or something, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>